Um, but we're actually proud that we have institutions that allow us to resolve those debates peacefully, and that in the end is what this whole campaign is about. Uh, let's go. Yes, sir. cyber efforts. Um, how concerned are you with the upcoming elections in Canada of foreign meddling in your elections, particularly from Russia? And maybe more generally for Mr. Hunt, how do you see the relationship with Russia uh, in, the, in this context? Thank you. Um, we're, we are very concerned. Uh, I think our judgment is uh, interference is very likely. Um, and we think there has probably already there have probably already been efforts uh, by malign foreign actors uh, to disrupt our democracy. Uh, what I think we're seeing is something that is uh, happening in many liberal democracies, which is the effort is not so much to secure a particular outcome in an election. Uh, the effort is to make our societies more polarized and to make us, uh, as citizens of democracies, more cynical about the very idea that democracy exists and that it can work. So we're very mindful of it. Um, we in Canada, uh, led by my excellent colleague, Corinna Gould, who is the Minister for Democratic Institutions, have put a number of measures in place to get us ready to defend ourselves. Uh, a very important one is just to be sure that Canadians are aware of the danger. One of the things we've learned, especially from talking to our friends in the Baltic states and in Ukraine, is that probably the most important and most powerful defense is an aware citizenry. Um, we also at uh, the G7 foreign ministers meeting and at the leaders level last year in Canada uh, created what we're calling a rapid response mechanism to help all of us identify efforts to interfere in our democracies and to support one another where we see those efforts. Um, we're running short of time. I will answer your question, John, but I, I'm just going to take two last questions together and then I'll give everyone on the panel a chance to have a, a last word to say yes. Uh, Thomas Adamson, uh, AP. Uh, just a question for the Foreign Secretary, uh, if you will. Um, I read the statement um, from the uh, FCO basically saying how <clears throat> once Brexit has happened, the UK will remain a global power. Uh, and in a sense, uh, Britain here is um, justifiably trumpeting its power on the global stage. However, with the absence of uh, the top US officials, namely Secretary Nielsen in Paris and Secretary Pompeo here, to what extent is that spotlight and is the relevance of the G7 diminished um, in terms of, of relevance that it has. Okay, um, and I'm going to take one last question from this side. Yes, sir. Adam Plowett from AFP News Agency. Um, sorry, I'm afraid it's Brexit again, but uh, I know you'll be meeting with your, um, your French counterpart later, Foreign Secretary, and I was just wondering whether you, as we now know, that Britain will be uh, asking for an extension. Uh, the French uh, have been saying that they won't, they're not prepared to grant that unless there is a clear project. So how, how concerned are you that the, the French might drive an extremely hard bargain and be prepared to, uh, to, uh, to push a new deal at the, uh, the European Council Summit next week. Okay, um, I'll just take those questions. I'm going to pass on to Christian Amal for, for a last word before we uh, wrap up. Um, so first of all, um, John's question about, uh, about cyber. The, the issue that we have at the moment is that uh, we know that um, states like Russia have got a very active planned, uh, thought-through strategy to interfere in democratic processes in Western countries and sow dissension and chaos wherever they can. And we know this has happened in the United States. We know it's happened in Ukraine. Um, and uh, we've had hacking attacks uh, on the British Parliament, on the Bundestag, not necessarily by Russia, but this is becoming something that non-democratic countries are looking at as a tool. And uh, what happens at the moment is that we are getting much, much better through working together at fending off these attacks when they happen. And 
preventing them actually having an impact on the outcome of elections. What we don't do at the moment is deter them from happening in the first place. And so one of the discussions that we will be having this afternoon is what we need to do as an effective deterrent strategy to make the price of trying to interfere with our democratic processes too high. Um, at the moment, we don't have that deterrent strategy, and uh, the UK certainly very strongly believes that we should, and I know Canada is agreement on that point. Um, in terms of the relevance of the G7, I mean, I think the G7 is very, very important. Uh, we all have very regular contacts with Mike Pompeo anyway, um, but it's a very, very important grouping because it is the world's leading democracies, and therefore we have an alliance of values inside the G7, um, and certainly the UK in terms of our role, whether it's Brexit or no Brexit, we've always thought the G7 is an extremely important forum and we'll continue to do so. Um, and Adam's question, we're talking about media freedom today, so of course you can ask any question like about uh, Brexit or, or whatever. But, I mean, the truth is, first of all, no deal outcome is bad for the UK. It's also very bad for the European Union. Uh, none of our economies are too, uh, are growing fast enough to guarantee that a no-deal scenario wouldn't push us into recession. So it's a bad outcome all round, and I think the French understand that. I think the Germans understand that. And, you know, what we are looking for is to avoid a long extension and to resolve this. And what we will say to the European Council meeting on Wednesday is that we are doing everything we can, and uh, we will give them an honest assessment as to whether we think that process will bear fruit. But what I think they will see from the actions that Theresa May has taken over the last week is that she is leaving no stone unturned to do that. So Britain is not dragging its feet in trying to solve this, but we are a democracy with a hung parliament, so it's not easy. But we are doing everything we can to resolve this, and that's what the British people want. Amal. Um, I would just add, I came here to say that I support the campaign by the UK and Canada for freedom of the press. What I've learned today is that for you in this room, what you want is freedom to stop reporting on Brexit. <laughs> and I fully support that campaign as well. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I'll just, can I, oh, just, sorry, I just Kristen. want to say two, yeah. quick, two quick final things. Um, so to the question about, you know, that a lot of people are asking, how can you be effective? Um, it's something I ask myself all the time uh, because I really think this is a serious moment in the world. Um, I really believe that liberal democracy is under greater threat than it has been at any time in my lifetime. Amal cited some very terrifying figures and so is the rules-based international order. And so I think it behooves those of us who believe that to be looking for new ways to fight back. And one of the ways that Canada is finding effective is sort of analogous to the plurilateral deals that are being done at the WTO. When people couldn't move past the Doha round, um, there was sort of a realization that find groups of countries that are prepared to move together, do that in a very open architecture way. And I think that's what we're discovering we can do in the world. Uh, and that's what Jeremy is leading here on media freedom that Canada is very keen to support. We've seen it effective. Um, and again, here I want to thank the UK. In the wide international support Canada has been able to get for the two Canadians arbitrarily detained in China. There's been a wide group of countries, very much including the UK, who have come out and spoken out about those detained Canadians, um, partly, I think, because you're worried that it could happen to your own citizens. And that sort of collective action, I think, is really essential in the world today. Um, and then just on threats to democracy, um, I wanted to be sure that we mentioned one other thing that uh, Canada is very focused on right now. Uh, the Christchurch attacks uh, were incredibly traumatic uh, for Canadians. Um, much as we feel about the UK as a fellow Commonwealth country, we feel New Zealanders are not only our friends, they're really our family. Uh, we, I think, all Canadians felt that Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern 
was magnificent in her response. And one of the things that we really support New Zealand on is identifying white supremacy and Islamophobia as real threats. And we think it's important to speak out about that. Thank you.